Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is a motion quick tip where we're continuing our exploration of the motion library. This time I'm going to talk about image units. Now, what are image units? Now, it's kind of hard to explain. I mean even the motion manual doesn't really do a very good job. Here's what it says. The image units category appears in the motion library if you are running Mac OS 10.5 or later. Motion supports the operating system's core image units. Okay, so what this basically means is if you're running Motion with at least OS 10.5, which is Leopard, then you have access to filters that are stored in the framework of the operating system, not just filters that were created specifically for Motion. So if you open the library by clicking on the Library tab or using the shortcut Command 2, what you'll see is that there are actually two categories named image units. The first one has the same icon as the filters category, and that's because that's what they are, they're filters. The second image units category is in the generator style. What's so interesting about image units is that several of them are identical or similar in nature to existing filters in the filters category. For example, click on the image units category and choose the blur folder from the right. Inside you can see Gaussian blur and zoom blur. Then click on the filters category and inside the blur folder there you'll also find a Gaussian blur and a zoom blur. But then if you go back to the image units there are several blurs here that exist such as disk blur, box blur, and motion blur that have no equivalent in the filters category. And in fact those filters that appear the same like Gaussian blur aren't necessarily the same in practice. I just have a piece of stock footage here in my project. You can use whatever video or stills that you want in yours. I'm going to apply the Gaussian blur from the image units category. And then I'm going to go to the filters category and I'm going to apply the same blur to the same clip. Now click on the inspector and select the filters tab. As you can see, the motion version of this blur has sliders for amount as well as giving you the ability to skew the blur along the horizontal or the vertical. The image units version has only one slider for radius, which is essentially the same thing as amount. So if the image units filters aren't as customizable as the motion filters, then why would you ever want to use one? Well, it's because of those other filters, the ones that are not repeats. Let's take a look at a few. Delete the blurs from your footage and then go back to the library. Select Image Units and find the Stylize folder. Inside there, you'll find a filter called Comic Effect. Drag it onto your footage. This is a cool little effect that simulates that old school Ben Day dots printing process that they used to use in comic books up until about, I guess, the 90s. The thing is that if you've ever only applied filters to your projects by clicking on the Add Filter button here in the toolbar, you might never know that this filter even exists. Click on the inspector and in the filters tab you'll notice that there's no way to adjust this filter. It just is. That makes it a little bit limited <laughs> to say the least. But there is a way to get more from this effect than just the base effect that you're getting right now. And that's by adding more filters. Go back to the library and select the filters. Go to the color correction filter and find levels. Drag the levels filter onto the clip. Go back to your inspector. By the way, since we're going to be going back and forth between the inspector and the library, it might be helpful to know what the shortcut is for inspector. I've already discussed that the shortcut for the library is Command 2. Well, in an in intuitive fashion, the shortcut for the inspector is Command 3. This is a quick way to toggle back and forth between these two areas. Anyway, back to the inspector. In the Filters tab, I can go in and start making adjustments to my Levels filter and it behaves as you might expect, increasing or decreasing the contrast and brightness of the shot. Nothing too spectacular. Click the reset filter button. That's this little curved arrow on the right here. Now, drag the levels filter below the comic effect in the layers pane and start adjusting again. This time, there is a profound difference in how the comic effect looks. This has to do with what is called order of operations. In motion, the lowest effect in a stack is applied before any of the other effects are figured. 
That means in our case that the tweaking that I'm doing with the levels filter is being done before the comic effect is rendered. And since the comic filter is using the lightness and darkness of a clip to determine how the effect looks, the levels filter can make a really big difference. Basically, I'm sliding the white point over to punch up the brightness and the black point over to punch up the contrast. The result is thicker lines of definition in the runner and some more definition in the background. Hit Command 2 to go back to the library. In the same color correction filter, find the color balance filter and drag it to your clip. Instead of just dropping it on the layer though, try sliding it below the levels filter. Color is also the determining factor on how the comic effect works. I'm going to drop the shadow red a little bit and push the shadow blue up a tad. Then I'll bring down the midtone red. Basically I'm trying to remove the color from the runner's shirt. One last effect we can apply is the Gaussian blur. Go back to the library and in the blur folder drag the Gaussian blur back onto the clip. Because it's at the top of the stack the blur is applied last and just makes this hard to look at. But if we drag it to the bottom of the stack, presto, the comic effect gets a whole lot of cleanup. Hit Command 3 to go to the inspector and find the controls in the filters tab. There's an ugly black border surrounding the frame, but you can get rid of that by clicking the crop button. Also, you may not want that much cleanup in your shot, so you can try lowering the amount of the blur to about one or two. There you go a few extra filters and you have really refined this effect. Now I want to show you a few more filters that you might not be aware of. For this I'm going to use a different clip. So I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to turn this one on. Go to the library. In image units find the distortion effect folder and drag glass distortion onto your clip. Now nothing happens at first. Go back to your inspector and check the filters tab to see our controls. We have three controls but the big one is this texture. The glass distortion filter uses an image or a video as the texture map for this effect. The idea being that you're looking through a piece of glass that has some texture to it. For my texture I'm going to head back into the library. Scroll down to the content category. This category is filled with images and I'm sure one of them here will be exactly what we're looking for. Click on the images folder and twirl open the folio folder. Find the image that's called Concrete 1 and then drag it into the project. It doesn't matter if it's filling the frame or not. Just turn it off and then select the filter that we applied. Drag that concrete layer into the texture source well. Now it looks like we're viewing the scene through a piece of pitted and scarred glass. If you see an edge to your effect, like I do here, just adjust the center to get rid of it. Pretty cool. Try it with a couple different images to see what kind of different effects you can get. Another really cool effect is called spot color. I'm going to try this on yet another clip. So I'll turn this one off and I'm going to open this new one. In the library, under image units, click on the stylize folder again. Find spot color, it's down near the bottom, and then drag it onto your clip. This filter allows you to choose three colors that are in your scene and then replace them with three other colors. And there's also controls for color threshold which is referred to as closeness and also contrast. With a high contrast it looks more like a three or four tone painting. Even without choosing base colors I can use the defaults and get a pretty cool look just by playing around with the closeness and the contrast sliders. Finally, I want to show off a couple of image unit generators. These work like normal generators. In other words, they're applied like layers and can be modified. The first one I want to point out is the radial gradient. At first blush, it kind of looks like the same effect that you can get by feathering a circle over a black background or by using the soft gradient generator as I mentioned in my tutorial on generators. And if all we we're doing was creating a simple gradient background, I might not even bother with this. But if you go to the generator tab for this layer, you'll see two sliders for radius, an inner and an outer radius. By manipulating these two sliders, you can quickly create a soft feathered circle with a bright solid color core. 
It's perfect for making simulated glints or flares for your motion graphics. In addition, the second color for this gradient, in this case black, can be made transparent simply by twirling down the parameter and sliding the opacity slider to zero. Now it'll show through to the layer below it. The other generator that I find useful here is the lenticular halo. Go back to the library, drag lenticular halo into the project. This effect is kind of a distortion that you see surrounding lights when your eyes are dilated. I used to see them when I go swimming and you come up and the water is all in your eyes and everything. It's a good effect for building your own kind of lens flare or for augmenting an existing lens flare. Go to the inspector and in the generators tab, you can adjust the radius and the width of the halo. I'm going to make it a little larger and wider. I'm also going to drop the saturation strength and make the contrast so that it doesn't stand out so much. Now these two generators can really beef up the regular lens flare that comes with motion if you've ever felt it to be a little bit limited. Go back to the library and click on the generators category. Find the lens flare and then add it to your project. Go up to the selection tool and hold it down to reveal all of motion selection tools. Choose the bottom one which is called the adjust item tool. It's a pretty ambiguous name but what it allows you to do uh, for the lens flare is to adjust the position of the flare itself. Now just grab this little crosshairs and move it towards the center of the radial gradient. When it combines with the radial layer the flare blooms quite a bit. Now you can go into the inspector and make more adjustments if you want to the lens flare. And there you have it. The hidden treasures of the image units category. There are a lot more than just the ones I've shown here so check them out when you have some time. I'm Andy Neal and this has been a Motion Quick Tip.